Hello, my name is Homer Knox, I'm on, and I'm at the Life Center in Bradenton, Florida. The Life Center is a men's discipleship residential program, and so it's always a thrill to be with the men. So we're going to teach tonight on the subject of church attendance. Church attendance. First question is, why do we come together for church attendance? And the easy answer here is, you got to, right? You know, I mean, there's no choice here on this. But at some point in your life, you'll have a choice. And so we're going to talk about that tonight. The first reason we, we come together is we worship Jesus. First Chronicles, the 16th chapter, the 29th verse. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in holy attire. So we're commanded to come together. How wonderful it is to be able to worship the King of Kings, isn't it? Praise God. Praise God. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, the 26th verse. Not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. The day drawing near. What does the day drawing near mean? Well, there's two things going to happen. One, we're going to die first, or Christ is going to return first. You know, so there's two days approaching. And every day we get a little closer to both of them, don't we? Okay. Uh, we worship together because it's for our good. For our good. Can you think of a New Testament commandment that's not for our good? I can't think of any. I can't think of any. They're all for our good. And this is a good commandment for us. Uh, we come to worship together because Jesus set that example. Luke, the fourth chapter, the 16th verse. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. Do you think that Jesus would miss church for any reason? No. Think he'd say, I just don't feel like going today. I got other things to do. The fish are biting. Any of those things, no? I think, uh, I think Jesus would worship every day. Some situations that you have to work. I had a working career all my life, worked all my life, and there's sometimes you have to work on Sunday. You do what you gotta do, right? You gotta do what you gotta do. What I did on my situation is, I started to pray that out. Say, Lord, I wanna worship on Sunday, and then God opened that door for me that I would not have to work on Sunday. Hey, we come together because there's a New Testament church example. Acts, the 20th chapter, the 7th verse. On the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread. They came together on the first day and they broke bread, which is communion, right? It's communion. Why do we come together? To be blessed. Psalm, the 84th chapter, the 4th verse. How blessed are those who dwell in your house. Don't be mistaken, gentlemen. There's a blessing that comes from going to church. There's a blessing to come, and you lose that blessing if you don't go. Psalm, the 92nd chapter, the 13th verse. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will what? Flourish. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will flourish. We come together. Jesus ministers when we come together, doesn't he? Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 20th verse. For where two or three have gathered together in my name, I am there in their midst. Do you guys think about that when you're in church? You think all these people gathered in Jesus' name that He's here. He's here. Praise God. Praise God. And we see His workings, don't we? We see His workings. And what does Jesus do in our midst? Well, He heals. I've been healed. He comforts. He gives knowledge. He encourages. He gives peace. He gives direction. And he gives blessing at church, doesn't he? Those are the things he gives us. What does Jesus do in our midst? Number one, he heals. Number two, he gives comfort. Number three, he gives knowledge. Number four, he encourages. Number five, he gives peace. Number six, he gives direction. And number seven, he gives blessings. When I go to church, I'm, things are stirred up in my heart. I don't have peace. And... Uh, when I leave church, I do have peace. Amen. So God provides, the Holy Spirit provides that. He gives me direction. He tells me which way to go. A lot of times I get my offering messages from Pastor Stan. I say, oh man, I'd make a good offering message. And he gives me that. Okay. We minister to others. Another reason we go to church. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the 11th verse. 
And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers. Some as apostles is a person that spreads the word. I always thought apostle meant started new churches. That's really not the reading. It's spreading the word. Some as prophets. Our church used to have a prophet here. His name was Daryl. And he used to come here. He used to prophesy at church. Now Daryl's gone on to be with the Lord. And so our church is lacking a prophet. And so I've recommended to some of the men here that they think about that and pray about that. Maybe God will open that up. I prayed about that for years, that I would get the gift of prophecy. Matter of fact, I had prophets pray over me that I was going to get it, but I never got it. Now, I'm not, it's not over yet, but I haven't gotten it for 15 years here. And so I don't normally pray for that every day now. I'm over that. Gave some of his evangelist. Pastor uh, Stan is an evangelist. He's long before they had the Life Center. He was out on the street. He was an evangelist. That's what he is. And we have some as pastors. We have some pastors. Pastor Ruth is a good example of pastor. And we have teachers. I teach. There's other people in the church that teach. And so those are the we minister to others. And you know what? We need others. We need others at church. My best friends in my life have come from church. My best friends have come from church, and I can name them off to you. And uh, they've been wonderful men, wonderful friends to me. And so, but I got them at church. I didn't get them other places. Uh, coming to Throne of Grace gives Bonnie and I the opportunity to minister. And so one of the reasons I come to church, I want to be able to minister to the men here. Uh, coming to church encourages the pastoral staff, doesn't it? You know, I've been speaking where there's you know, nobody there. There should be people there. There's nobody there. And it encourages our pastors. And so anything I want to do is encourage them. Colossians, the third chapter, the 16th verse. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your heart to God. Praise God, that sounds like church to me, doesn't it? Amen. That sounds like church. Monitoring means to encourage onward. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Your meals can be better. You know, I mean, that, that something like that. <laughs> It'd be hard to be better, buddy. <laughs> It'd be hard to be better. Right? You can do it. You can do it. Hearing the worship team ministers to me. You know, hearing the worship teams ministers. One of our muse singers up there, just an encouragement to me. Just sold out for the worship. Just sold out for the worship. And so, uh, sometimes you get an opportunity when you get out of here. There are churches out there that have great choirs. They have just wonderful choirs. And we used to visit, in Lancaster we used to visit churches. We had a church that just had a wonderful choir. Just wonderful to hear people sing and worship. Just wonderful. Reasons why we should attend church. Number one, we're commanded to attend. Number two, for our good. Number three, Jesus set the example. Number four, the New Testament church example. Number five, to be blessed. Number six, Jesus ministers at church. Number seven, so we may minister to others. And number eight, encourages the pastoral staff. Now we know why we go to church. We're moving to when do we go to church? When do we go? Well, the first thing, churches when they started out in, in the... Uh, uh, when the church was formed, they went every day. The apostles went every day to church. They broke bread every day. Acts, the second chapter, the 42nd verse. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, communion, and to prayer. So in the early church, they, they went to church every day. They went to church every day. And we go weekly. When is the first day of the week? Sunday. When is the first day of the week? Well, some people think that it's Saturday. You know, there's a whole bunch of people that think that it's Saturday. The Messianic Jews think it's Saturday. The Seventh-day Adventists think it's Saturday. And the question is, does it matter? No. Does it really matter? Uh, I, uh, when we come together to worship, is that really significant what day it is? I uh, was on a mission board with a gentleman, and his ministry was to minister to, he had a church in Hong Kong. He had a church in Hong Kong. And the church time was 3 o'clock, like on a Wednesday morning, a.m., 3 a.m., because that's when the cab drivers didn't have work. They picked the time when there's least work. And he had hundreds of them. You know, there's thousands of, of cab drivers in Hong Kong. And so, I don't think it matters. Do you guys think it matters? I don't think it matters. But that's a dogmatic subject. 
people can get really upset about that. I was, uh, we lived overseas, I was in the ocean swimming there, it was down in the Caribbean, and I was talking to this guy. And we were having this nice conversation, and then it got to, where do we go to church? And I told him, and he told me where he went to church, he went to a church that believed in Saturday worship. And God bless him, but he started to tell me how I was all wrong. I was all wrong when I went to church, you know. And I listened for a little bit, you know. No sense arguing with him. He believes what he believes. Okay, he believes. And so what I decided to do was I just stroked away, you know, see you later. I just, I just left. Went to another part of the ocean, you know. It's a nice guy. I'm wishing the best, but uh, that conversation ended. We know why we go to church. We know when we go to church. Now we're going to talk about where do we go. Where do we go to church? First of all, there are home churches out there. Guy has a big living room and he starts his own home church. And there's lots of them out there. 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter, the 19th verse. Aquila and Priscilla greet you heartily in the Lord with the church that is in their house. So they had a church in their house, New Testament church in their house. Colossians, the fourth chapter, the 16th verse. Greet the brethren and the church that is in her house. So their churches, home churches. Well, why did they why did they have home churches in the early church? Well, they were being persecuted. The Jews wanted to kill them. The Romans wanted to kill them, and so you couldn't have a church building. It had to be in home churches, and so that's why they did that. That's why they did that. Well, the communists uh, took over China in 1949, and the first thing they did is they closed all the churches and they threw out all the missionaries. It's the first thing they did. One of the first things. And Billy Graham's father-in-law was in China and he was thrown out of China uh, when the communists took over and so they went to home churches the church went to home churches in China and they did a study 20 30 years later I don't know when it was but like the church had tripled home, ch home churches are really viable and you and they did a wonderful job in China keeping that together and increasing the believers uh, there are many home churches today Bonnie and I have visited a home church up in Lancaster Pennsylvania and they had a guest speaker there and it was nice the Amish do home churches you know for me with the Amish they have home churches and they uh, they meet at a different home each week and they, I saw one, one time we went by, they had a flatbed truck, and they had all these pews there. And so what they were doing every week, they were moving the pews to a different house. And that's the way they worked it. They have lunch there, and then they have an afternoon activity there for the, for the men and women and the children. Trust me, it's very appealing. It's very appealing. Uh, we had a Amish family down where we used to live. I didn't know them, but they were in, close to our group. And they rode their buggy, buggy an hour and a half to church in the morning and it took them an hour and a half to come back at night because wow. they had to they had milk the cows at five or something so they could only stay so long and I think he got up at three to milk the cows and get done and then they took off at 5.30 or 6 to get to the church and then they were at church all day that's a real commitment to church isn't it? real commitment yeah. to church let's do conclusions here now you know there's many reasons to worship in a group at a home or a church there's many reasons and don't lose the blessing that God has for you by not going. Uh, you'll lose the joy in your life not going to church. You gentlemen are leaving here. You know, you're here now, but this is only temporary for you. And you're going to be moving on. And so a lot of men I see that leave here struggle because they stop going to church. Very few men have left here and come back here to church. Some do, very few. Jeff, Jeff left. Jeff's come back. Uh, but there's very few that do that. Don't lose that. Don't lose that. I can't emphasize how much important church attendance is, church worship is to you. Uh, my family, Bonnie and I, we have a lifestyle of worshiping in a church. When we are not here, and we're not here occasionally, we visit other churches. If we're not here, we will be in a church somewhere else. We always go to church. I don't want to lose that blessing. Finally, I, I need to worship. I need to worship Jesus with a body, with a group of people at church. I need to worship. I need to love on Jesus. I need to praise Jesus. You know, I want to worship. I want to sing songs, praises to God. I love to hear other people sing. I love to hear the worship team sing. Uh, I long to hear the worship team, and so I'm so thankful for them. Uh, I need to worship. I need to hear the Word of God preached and taught. It's not the same as hearing it on a tape when, the, when he's right up there preaching, is it? It's, uh, it's wonderful. Uh, I need to worship. I love the fellowship of other Christians. I love to see the Holy Spirit in action at church. And you see that in our church, don't you? You saw that two weeks ago. The Holy Spirit kicked in. Kaboom. 
That's so wonderful. So wonderful. And it keeps, even though I'm not hit, it keeps me in touch with the reality of all of it. Keeps me in touch. Normally, I will feel, when there's a strong Holy Spirit presence, I will feel that. Okay, I know it's there. I can sense it. You know, that doesn't always happen. But just because it doesn't happen to me, it can be happening to others. I need to worship. I need to minister. God's called me to teach. He's called me to work with men. I need to encourage and I need to bless men. And so, so I'm thankful for that. I need to worship. Man, I need a healing sometimes. Amen. I've been sick. You know, I've been sick. I've had some stuff. And God's healed me. I had a big time back deal. God's healed me of that. Saved me from surgery. And I've had other things in my life. And, and I need to be prayed for and I need, to be, I need to be healed. I need to worship. I want peace from the confusion of life. Sometimes life screws you up. Hard week at work, hard week with your bosses, hard week of everything. And so you come into church messed up and normally God will smooth all that over. When I leave church, I have peace or I didn't have before. And so I need that. I need to join in prayers with others. We pray over that box. I need to join in that. A lot of prayer requests in there, and I need to join in that praying for others. I need to worship. I need to hear God's voice. And God's voice speaks at church. He speaks to you at church. Maybe not real loud, but you'll sense. And so I need to hear that. I need to worship. I need to worship. Thank you, Jesus, that you created and allow me to attend church. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the Men Teaching Men YouTube channel. Thank you. Hello friends, this is Homer Knox again. I hope you enjoyed this video teaching. The question I have for you is, are you born again? Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and are you saved? If not, why not? Why not? Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He suffered and died under Pontius Pilate and the Romans. He was buried and he rose from the dead on the third day after burial. And he's ascended into heaven according to the scriptures. There is salvation in no one else. No one else. And so if this has stirred your heart and you'd like to receive Jesus as your personal Savior, please pray with me. Dear Jesus, I accept you as my personal Savior. Come into my heart. Please forgive me of all my sins, all my sins. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for making me a new creature. And thank you for the Holy Spirit now living inside of me. Amen and amen. If you prayed this prayer for the first time from your heart, you're now born again. You're a Christian. Welcome. Welcome to the family. If you prayed this prayer after slipping away, you're now back in the fold. You're part of the kingdom. Welcome. Congratulations. There's another teaching on the menteachingmen.com website entitled, I Just Got Saved, Now What? And that video will help you on your new walk with Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.